on behalf of myself and our co-host, uh, the um, PIP Chair uh, and Prime Minister of Fiji and my good friend uh, Frank. Wonderful to have all of you here uh, today and to be able to just take a little bit of time out to spend with one another. You know, it occurred to me uh, when we were able to uh, meet for the first time in a long time, um, kanohi te kanohi, face to face, uh, at the Pacific Island Forum meeting in Fiji recently. Uh, the leadership of uh, also as Secretary General Henry Puna, how important it is for us as Pacific family members to have that time together. There's n nothing quite like transacting business uh, as we would usually do with Talanoa with conversation. And so this is an opportunity amongst everyone's hectic schedules um, to, to just come together and have a little social time. So I don't want to cut into that too much, but I did want to make just one, uh, just give one simple reflection. I, like all of you, will have been uh, observing uh, what's been happening on the General Assembly floor over the past week. Uh, and there's been common themes and they're not common themes from which we can take much heart. Uh, the issues of escalating uh, insecurity as we see uh, the rhetoric and actions uh, in Ukraine uh, continue to escalate and the potential impact, regardless of our geographic distance, on all of us as a result of that. There's been talk of uh, issues like the potential use of nuclear weapons and these are not threats that are distant to us given the experience we've had with nuclear testing in our own region. And the second common theme has been that of the very present and real threat that climate change presents to our Pacific Fano, our Pacific family. But on all of these matters, uh, what I take comfort, hope and optimism from is that within our region there is a plan there is a plan on how we as a region would like to take on the challenges of today and tomorrow in the 2050 Blue Pacific Strategy. And here I want to acknowledge the leadership of particularly Fiji and Vanuatu in getting us to the point where we now have this plan that we can present as was done today uh, with Fiji and Australia um, to our wider dialogue partners. There's not many, I think, within the international community that can say the region as a whole that we speak on that issue, the issue of climate change in particular with one voice, but the Pacific family does, and I think there's great strength in that. We may be small, but we are mighty. The final point that I wanted to acknowledge is the creativity and innovation by which the Pacific family are seeking to find ways to elevate the issues that are uh, of greatest interest to us. To um, just small examples, of course, Vanuatu seeking an advisory opinion through the International um, Court of Justice. And of course, I want to just again reiterate our support for Vanuatu in that work. And the second is the work that Tavalu is doing uh, at the moment bilaterally, but I hope uh, we'll take on those uh, multilateral institutions in redefining statehood. Because nothing I think will draw greater attention to the, the th very real and present threat of climate change than asking the international community to ensure that we define statehood not just by landmass because every Pacific Island country deserves to be recognised as a state regardless of what inundation does to our nations. And that is a very stark and real conversation to be having. So again, I just put New Zealand's support for all of the innovative ways that the Pacific continues to look to bring attention to the very real and present threat and give our support for the strategy and all of the work that led to it coming to fruition and being presented to the international community. Thank you once again, everyone, for the opportunity to come together for this dialogue and just enjoy one another's company. Uh, I'm going to hand over uh, now um, to um, uh, PM Barnumarama, but before we do that, as would be tradition in New Zealand, we're going to conclude my speech with Waiata, and I thank Finally, as I do every, every team in this room, those who make Anga Week what it is, 
uh, and who put so much effort into getting us as leaders to where we need to be, to making sure we're having the conversations we need to have. Our staff here who are based in New York, and I know every leader would want to give the same acknowledgement. So to those of you in the room, we thank you sincerely for the work you do on behalf of your nations and on behalf of us as leaders. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Nations for so warmly hosting our Pacific family. The last time uh, Fiji and New Zealand came together was, of course, in South Africa with boots strapped on <laughs> <laughs> for the Rugby World Cup final. <laughs> My fondest memory of that game was uh, seeing two of our Fijian players lend a supporting shoulder to an uh, injured Kiwi. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Melrose Cup is now safely at Fiji Shores, <laughs> but we are in New York together, where I'm glad to say we are on the very same side, working together in a complex world for a safe, open, and beautiful blue Pacific. What a fantastic sight you all to behold. After two year hiatus, we are finally back in the parliament of the world with our fellow Pacific leaders. A few of us may be a bit older, and hopefully a little wiser, but we are even more unstoppable than uh, we ever were. This week is the next step, uh, step of the journey we embarked up in Suva this past July. At that uh, leaders' meeting, we agreed to 2050 strategy for the Blue Pacific continent. Our blueprint for this three-decade uh, relay is ready. We will need to run each leg of that relay at a record-breaking pace. Because of the scale of the climate and ocean crisis we face, time, of course, is not on our side. Here at the 77th session, uh, every country and group of countries has come with its priorities. Our blue Pacific doesn't have the populations, doesn't have the weight of numbers that other nations and larger regional bloc can leverage for shaping the global agenda. Our one and our only recourse is, of course, solidarity. We must be utterly united in our message in every meeting and forum that we have the chance to speak at. I know we have some differences. There is a time and place for that. It is not here. It is not now. We are here at uh, this great global crossroad to seek open, 
inclusive and enduring partnerships that recognize and support the collective strength of our Blue Pacific region. I welcome uh, this afternoon the start of an excellent dialogue with partners of the Blue Pacific, led by uh, the USA. This shows that when we speak and act as one, with clarity in the voice, our messages are heard. A powerful new partnership that can stay the course is shaping up as well as the result. Many of you here have been, uh, uh, many of you have been here for the last three days. You can confirm that the discussions so far are focused on Russia's unjust war on Ukraine. We join the world in condemning Russia's war. Just this week, Mr. Putin hinted that he might use nuclear weapons. We in the Pacific who have lived the horror of nuclear fallout must condemn even the suggestion of such action by a head of state. But Russia's war is not the only conflict, uh, not the only conflict we condemn here. There is another war, of course, a climate war raging across our shores this very moment. It is being waged by the high emitting nations. Every nation, every country is in the crosshairs. If we leave New York, having only denounced the violence in Ukraine without denouncing the devastation wrought by a changing climate, we will have failed here. Every global leader has the capacity to speak up in defense of peace on every front. This week, we will see if they have the courage. I want to echo here uh, our absolute solidarity with Vanuatu uh, in calling for a resolution requesting the International Court of Justice to provide an adversary opinion on the obligations of states to protect the rights of present and future generations against the impact, uh, adverse impacts of climate change. We must continue to be clear in our resolve, unwavering as we look ahead. COP27 must deliver. It is an African COP that we accept, but it must also be a COP for the world. I also ask uh, all of you to urge states to formally support the declaration on preserving maritime zones. I also ask that we do everything within our collective power to keep our region nuclear weapon free. We did not have a say then, but we do now. And we will use our collective voice to protect the Blue Pacific continent at all costs. Time has not uh, loosened our bonds to our ocean. It never will. Effective management of 100% of the Pacific Ocean, an international legally binding instrument for the conservation and the sustainable use of marine biodiversity of areas beyond national jurisdictions. Long-term sustainability and economic uh, viability of our fisheries resources are all non-negotiable goals for us. We don't own these resources. We are their stewards. This generation of leaders holds them in trust for the benefit of those to come. Friends, Pacific Islands are not uh, generally known for our stubbornness or inflexibility. Indeed, our cultures pride uh, themselves on hosp uh, hosp uh, hospitality and being accommodating, but not always, not here. Our survival cannot be on the negotiating table. As we take the time to meet this evening, to share a drink of uh, a drink or a bowl of cover and catch up informally with each other, I hope you will all reflect on our shared purpose, our solidarity in facing some enormous challenges. People and communities across the Blue Pacific pray for us when we represent them in the halls of the UN. They know that their hope for a more secure future ultimately lies here with us. For their sake and the sake of so many generations of our people to come, I wish us all a hugely successful Angus 77. I thank you. God bless you all. Naka.